Today, I want to give you guys a quick update on this, my FPV quad that I built for the DJI Digital FPV system. Now, I built this one about 18 months, two years ago now, and it's fitted with the original DJI FPV ear unit. This is the actual quad I was using to test the system when it came out. It's fitted with a brain radix flight controller it has a hobby wing 60 amp 4 in 1 esc it does have gps on board because i tend to switch between beta flight and inav on it depending on what time of the year it is and it's been an absolutely solid bit of kit and it's not really given me any problems however about a month and a month and a half ago it developed a rather interesting fault whereas it would try and kill me and what would actually happen is the motors would go to full power output and completely ignore all input from the remote controller now this would only happen on landing and usually actually on a bit of a harsher landing than normal so if i was able to land the quad very softly it was fine but if it came down with a bit of a jolt it would tend to flip over and go full motor output and completely ignore all inputs now the only way at that point to actually stop it was to try and reach in to the and pull the battery plug and as you can imagine that isn't the easiest thing to do when you've got this and this spinning out at full pelt the options i had was either leave it to destroy the battery the battery go on fire or try and get a pair of pliers or something in there to pull the battery plug out on at least three occasions i ended up trying to hold this thing down with my foot and on the fourth occasion this happened, rather than it bouncing and flipping over, it actually bounced and headed off for me and it nearly took my head off. And that was the point where I thought enough is enough, we need to try and understand what was going on. So what I'm going to do now in the rest of this video is walk you through what I found when I stripped the quad down. Now there is nothing specifically technical here, the issue I had ends up being a grounding issue with regards to components and i'll walk you through that as we go through it but it is interesting that when you are building your own gear do make sure that you are covering off the possibility of components being able to move and shorter the components out especially in things like landing and things like that anyway so what we're going to do next is jump into the footage that i took when i stripped the quad down before we do that though if you do find this video interesting please do consider hitting the subscribe button don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well and you'll get updates on any of the videos we put out in the future anyway let's get into it and have a look at what i found when i actually ended up stripping the uh, top of the aircraft off so I got the top off the quad and started having a look and the first thing I noticed that a number of the wires had been pinched and the outside sheathing had actually been compromised and we could see through to the core. Now whether this was shorting on the actual outside case of the ear unit or the actual ESC board I'm not sure but taking a closer look you can see that the silicon covering on the harness from the autopilot down to the ESC has actually been damaged on a number of the wires along with the ear unit was mounted now this was a very tight setup but it was probably a little bit too tight in reality then looking at the harness and this is the harness that went from the ear unit to the flight controller it is a custom harness it isn't the original dji one this had also been compromised as well and in several places the internal wires were exposed and this again was able to short now something else i didn't really think of at the time of building this was the pads on the esc were also exposed to be able to touch on the ear unit housing and because the space was so short it was actually possible for it to touch so that may have also been the problem so what i've decided to do is cover this over with several layers of tape just over the top of the connections themselves put one on fold it in underneath and then put a second piece of tape over the top just isolating that edge connection from the housing on the ear unit now this really is a problem because of how tight this frame is and what seems to have happened is the ear unit has shifted backwards over time in use and it isn't something i noticed now whilst this isn't perfect it is a solution that hopefully should solve the problems i was having and it is something I'm going to keep an eye on with this quad moving forward it is or it has I should say had a few smashes to say the least this one so I'm not particularly surprised there has been movement but it wasn't something that had jumped into my head to think about when I started having the issues I was having where it was trying to uh, well head off into the sunset now just to give a bit of a double backup on this what I've also done is not only 
covered the edge connector on the back of the ESC but I also decided to cover the front of the ear unit as well just to give a second bit of backup so should it be pierced or should it begin to rub through there's a couple of extra layers of tape there for safety just to try and isolate that ear unit off and again I put one on the bottom folding up around to the top and then I did another piece just a bit bigger with a cutout for the cable as well just reaching up around just to make sure that it was nicely isolated and I wasn't accidentally grounding anything I shouldn't have been. Now once I'd done this it was then time to tidy up the mess on the cables themselves. I didn't end up replacing them. I simply decided to uh, tape them in the areas that they had been exposed and then bundle them together better than I'd done it before and just keep everything a bit cleaner and tidier overall to prevent them shorting out and hopefully that will prevent anything like this happening in the future. And that is pretty much it. As shown the issue was the ear unit was actually grounding the pins on the edge of this ESC and this is something you want to watch when you are doing your builds that you do have everything either isolated everything has space should some component within the system move or that you're covering any open connections up to make sure it doesn't happen when i built this aircraft i'll be honest i didn't even think about those connectors and at the time there was plenty of space there however what tends to happen as the aircraft's been used the air unit has crept forward and that's when it started to short the board and what it then did was lock the flight controller up and the board went to full power output and literally the only way you could stop it was by pulling the battery plug and i said the last time it was rather hairy indeed because it took a beeline for me i managed to flip it over get my foot on top of it and then managed to get in with a pair of pliers because i had someone with me and then try and pull that battery plug out the back so i thought i'd give you guys an update on what the cause was i've flown it since the problem's gone away so it is something to be aware of especially with those edge connectors whether it be on the vista or anything that uses edge connectors like that and if you have got wires around stuff like i had there making sure that they can't get pinched they can't get moved around this thing has been taken apart and built so many times the chances are i've just not really paid enough attention when i was doing some of the work on it and that's what ended up causing the issue anyway that's it for this one as i said at the start if you do find it interesting please do consider hitting the subscribe button hit the little bell next to it as well if you're interested in the dji digital fpv system there is a link to it in the description of this video as well